Thank you. Please remain standing for the reading of the scripture, which today is found on page 1127 in the Pew Bibles. One verse, Isaiah 43, 18. Hear the word of God. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. I've got a lot of slides today, so I had to make myself some notes so I don't forget what to say. But um, here we are, New Year's Eve, the last day of the year. Tomorrow, we start a new, well, today is first, officially the first day of the week, but kind of if we're working a, a new work week, a new month, a new year, and it all starts tomorrow. That's pretty amazing. So, this particular verse that I read this morning from Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43 is really a very powerful, powerful message to Israel. Um, I took one verse out of context because, well, it fits New Year's Eve, right? Forget the former things. Let's go back to that. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. So, yeah, I took it out of context, but... It really does fit the context very well of where we are right now. Okay, so let's put it back into context. He is saying, I am with you. This is what he's telling to Israel and what he's telling to us today. I am with you. So, God is with you. If I were to, and please don't raise your hands, but if I were to say, how many people feel like at times God's not with them? I know some hands would go up and some people would be saying, man, I, I'm not putting my hand up, but yeah, sometimes I feel like God's not with me. We probably all go through that at some point in our lives. Maybe you're going through it right now, but he is with you. He never leaves you. God is with you. And he's also saying, I am doing a new thing. So I just basically took all of Isaiah 43 and put it into just a couple of sentences there. Um, if you read the Bible app that we're reading, now there's papers in the back, by the way, new papers for the new month. But if you're reading it on the app, um, I won't say who, but somebody made a comment the other day. Boy, that was a sermon in a paragraph. And I said, no, don't say that. People are going to expect that on Sunday mornings now. So this is going to be a little bit longer. But, <laughs> but anyway... He's saying, I am with you, and I'm doing a new thing. That's basically what Isaiah 43 is. And it kind of all culminates in this one passage that says, forget what's in the past, don't dwell on it, let's move forward. Okay? So where are we right now in 2023? We could think about the things that he has done for us. Was he with us in 2023? I think that's a resounding yes. I personally think that for our church anyway, it was a very good year, a very good year. Now, a lot of us may have struggled with many things. Uh, I know Tanya and I went through something very traumatic here recently, but God was with us through it all, through it all. And all of us, no matter what we went through, God was with us through it all. So was he with us? Yes. Now, what we could look at, these are some things. Can you read that in the back? Okay, we can look at these things as things that God did for us in 2023. We could, you know, the disaffiliation was huge. It was a relatively painless compared to what it could have been. It's never easy to go through something like that. It's never without pain, but it was better than it could have been. We got new televisions. We got a new sign. Our church grew, but... What has he done in us? That's what we really want to look at, is what has he done in us? And here's some of the things that he's done in us. We've seen people healed. We've we started this Bible reading plan, and I am just blown away by how many people are reading, and I thank you all for, for reading. And by the way, if you have fallen behind, okay, start tomorrow. Pick up on January 1st, whatever it says to read January 1st, read that. 
And if you go back and read the rest some other time when we're done, okay. And if not, get it the next time around. It's okay. If you have fallen behind, just get back on track right now. It doesn't matter. God understands. It's not like, oh, I got 50 days to read. I'm never going to get caught up. No, don't read those 50 days or 20 days or whatever it is. Even if it's two days, you don't want to get caught up. That's okay. Just start again. Many of us have grown closer to God this past year. Some of you have told me how you have, and I'm thankful for that. We've had an increase in knowledge in our church, and we've had greater closeness in our congregation. I remember when I first started here in 2015, I asked somebody, I didn't know anybody, I asked a particular person, who's that person that sits on the other side in, in such and such row? I don't know, I don't know anybody on that side. <laughs> but I bet that person now knows people on both sides, and I'm not gonna call that person out. But that was happening in 2015. And now I, if I were to say, all of you look over here and all of you look over there and say, do you know everybody? You probably do. But if you don't, we got 365 days before I bring this up again, so get to know them. Because God did bring us closer and he can continue to bring us closer. So what will he do for us? What will he do in us in 2024? This is what he's going to do. All of these things that we just talked about, okay? And I believe he's going to do so much more. I believe we're going to see more people being healed of their sicknesses. I can't stress this enough, that when Jesus died on the cross, he died for our forgiveness of sins and for our healing. God never does anything, just one thing always does it in pairs or triplicates. He died for our healing and for our sins. That's why he healed so many people in his ministry on earth. He wants us to be healed. Now, why don't we get healed? There's a lot of reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is we don't understand or accept that he wants us to be healed. You got to understand it and accept it or you're not gonna get it. Now, I'm not putting it on you, but I'm saying we will talk about this more in 2024 so that we all understand and accept it. So it's not on you, it's on me, it's on all of us. Better Bible literacy. I'm gonna start something new in 2024 that kind of help you get more interested in reading the Bible. But first of all, reading the Bible, if you've never read it before and you've started in September, or even if you want to start this year, you're going to learn. You will not remember everything. There are still times when I read and I say, I, I didn't know that was in there. And I've read it several times. But you will remember things as you go. You will increase if you take time to do it. We'll be even closer to him. Many of us will grow closer in our relationship with God this year. We're going to talk about, in the next few weeks, we're going to talk about hearing from God. I did a little bit on it last year. I don't think I did enough. I'm going to do a different approach this year. How do we know that we're hearing from God? We're going to talk about that this year. More congregational cohesion and understanding the gifts of the Spirit. You know, those things that we, I was just saying how I read, I read it and I say, I didn't know that was in there. Just this morning, I read something in Ephesians chapter four that I have never, I mean, I've read it, never stunk, got through this thick skull here. It's this one little phrase that says, he gave men gifts, and that includes women too. He gave them gifts. How did I not see that before? I always I believe that the Holy Spirit gives us gifts, but it's right there in Ephesians 4. It's in the Word of God, so it's got to be true. So we'll talk more about that this year too, and we'll understand our gifts better. So how will we achieve it? Through worship. Worship is so, so important. And there's all kinds of ways to worship. Our style in this church is different than it 
is at the church across the park or the church down the street or the other way down the street. It's different, and that's okay. Because worship is not, here's a piece of paper, you follow these rules, and this is how you worship God. That's not what it is. Worshiping God is what you feel in your heart, what you bring out in your beliefs. Whether you just stand there and don't sing at all, or if you sing loudly and sing a solo, it's still worship. Yes, you can be standing there not singing at all and still worshiping God. It's what's in your heart. So when we worship, that brings us closer to him, that helps us understand him. If we, let's say we get buried in a bunch of sand, okay? If you get buried in sand, it's gonna be hard to breathe. But as you come out of that sand, you'll be able to breathe. And, but you, if you just got your head above the sand, you know, you, you, you still got all this weight pushing on you and it kind of hurts your body. But the more you come out of that, the, the more free you feel. So think of our lives in this world as coming out of the sand, that God is pulling us out by worship, by reading the Bible, by praying. He's pulling us out because there are things around us and happening to us that we don't know how they're affecting us. We are spiritual beings living in a physical world. We're not physical beings living in a physical world. We are spiritual be beings in a physical body and a physical world. And God's spirit, and he's pulling us out of the physical. We're going to go deeper with prayer. I plan to do some prayer meetings this year. I don't know how many. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know when. But I know that the Lord has called me to do prayer meetings where we will just get together and we'll just pray. I just told you what it's going to look like, and I don't know if that's what it's going to look like or not. We'll find out when it happens, okay? I may have plans, but God will lead us in what we should do. But we're going to go deeper with prayer this year. Continue the Bible reading plan. Again, thank you for everybody who's joined in. I am really, really blown away by how many people are participating and the comments that are made and how every month, if I'm late getting the papers back there, somebody's asking me, hey, do you have those papers yet? That tells me you want to read, and I just love that. So thank you. So we're going to keep reading and doing more Bible studies, too. I've kind of fallen off on that one. I'll get back on track with that and having a greater relationship with God. This is important. This is the most important right here. We all have an understanding of what a relationship with God is, and nobody's right or wrong as long as you have a relationship with God. But I'm hoping that we can come together and perhaps share with one another how we have a relationship with God so that maybe I learn from you, you learn from me, the person on this side learns from the person on this side. If we all learn together, we pick up things. And you know what that's called? That's called fellowship. And when we come together in fellowship, we pick up on things that other people are doing and like, oh, I never thought about looking at God that way. I never thought about asking for that in prayer. I never thought about whatever it may be. So as we share with one another more, not only are we going to be more cohesive as a congregation, but we're going to go deeper in our relationship with God. Because that's what he desires. Because what happens when you go deeper in your relationship with God? I'm going to tell you what happens. Now, you guys, you don't have to believe me. And I'm not saying that this is a knock on anybody else. But Chad didn't get COVID. Well, you know why Chad didn't get COVID? Because Chad believes in the healing power of God. Now, I'm not saying that's why you got it, Kathy. I'm not saying that, okay? And I'm not saying that's why your mom got it, Chad. But when I heard that Chad's mom had COVID and Kathy didn't, and I know what, what Chad and I have talked about, I said, oh, God, I see what you're doing. Just so that we can say this to other people. Now, Chad, please don't go home and get COVID today. <laughs> Because you'll make me look like a fool. No, I'm just kidding. But we know that won't happen, right? So as we go deeper in our relationship with God, he will take care of things that we don't even have to think about. That's the important thing. We don't have to manufacture these things. Oh, I've got to do better next year. 
this is the time where we make New Year's resolutions and by the end of January, they're done, right? I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I'm going to do this. When you say I, you may as well put the words, will fail after it. But when you say, God, help me to do this. Help me to eat better. Help me to read the Bible more. Help me to pray more. Help me to understand you more. Help me in my job. Help me with my finances. Help me with my relationship. When you put God first, success awaits you. That is a guarantee from God. Success awaits you. But when you say, I am going to work on, it's 50-50, maybe 60-40, maybe even worse, you're likely to fail because we don't have the strength to do what we think we can do. And that's not a knock on us. We just don't have it, but God does. And he will help us. He will. The most success I've had in my life has been when I asked God to help me, not when I determined that I was gonna do something. Determination helps, okay? Don't get me wrong, but when you ask God, whew, and that's going to get you deeper, it's going to increase your knowledge, you're going to increase your understanding, you're going to increase your cohesiveness with others in the congregation, you're going to become a better person. So when I first came in here in 2015, <laughs> I know I had in my mind what way things were going to be, but when I came in and saw if I may use the word turmoil, that this congregation was in. But God said, don't look at that. Don't look at the past. I want you to look forward to what I'm going to do, what he was going to do, not me, what he was going to do. So I did. I looked forward to what he was going to do, and he's been doing it. Praise God he's been doing it. We're doing well, and we're going to continue to do well. And having said that, we're probably going to get attacked now by the enemy. Fight back. Hold on to God. Trust in him. Forget all the things in the past. They are in the past, and that's where they belong. But look forward to what's coming each day with the Lord, and we will do well. I promise you, we will succeed. I'm very excited about things that are coming, and... Hopefully you are too. I will say this, it's a little premature, but I'll say this, in 2025, I'm going to be ordained. It'll be the first time in 10 years that you'll have an ordained pastor in this church. Doesn't really mean anything other than a piece of paper, but it's just something to show what God is doing, okay? So God is working in this congregation and in our hearts and in our lives. We will have setbacks, we will have trials, but he is with us. Even when we don't think he is, he is with us. So let's go out there and have a great New Year's Eve. Be safe. Don't go out on the roads. Oh man, it's crazy. But have a happy New Year and let's start tomorrow with God fresh and new and praying and asking him to be with us this entire year because he will be. Whether we ask or not, he will be, but it's, let's just ask him to be with us next year. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful year we've had and carry us forward into the new year, Father, as we forget what is in the past and we look forward to what lies ahead. We press on towards that goal of the upward call in Jesus Christ. So be with us, guide us each day, care for us each day. Bring us the healing we need. Bring us the understanding and knowledge we need. Bring us the closeness with our family and friends that we need and with our congregation. Lord, we pray not for ourselves, but for your glory for this new year to come. Because when you're glorified, Lord, we will be blessed by you. So we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen.